This is Xenox from PentestGeek.com and I'm going to show you how to install Fishing Frenzy. If you open up your browser and check out the GitHub repository on PentestGeek.com slash Fishing Frenzy, uh, take a look at the wiki. We've installed a, an installation guide for Kali Linux. So let's follow along. First thing we want to do is download the Fishing Frenzy repository using Git. Next, we'll move into the Apache directory where we're going to edit the Apache configuration file. And we're going to add in two configuration files for Fishing Frenzy to always run and another one so that Fishing Frenzy can manage virtual hosts and phishing websites for you. So now that we've got those added in, uh, let's create the pf.com file since it doesn't exist. And we're just going to populate it with some default values here. This basically tells Apache to run our Rails application properly. Uh, the one thing you'll probably want to change is the server name. This is the name used uh, so Apache knows which website to serve up. So now that we got that, let's create the http.conf file so it exists. And moving on in the installation, let's now install RBM and Ruby. This is going to take a while, so I'm going to try to fast forward in parts where you don't have to wait. Now that we have RBM and Ruby installed, let's actually try to run RBM. You might notice that you got command not found. Well, that's because we need to tell Kali where to find RBM. So we can just run this command right here. Now we can run RBM and we can see that Ruby is installed. Uh, what we need to do is we need to add that to the bash rc file. Uh, if I could type. And down at the bottom we're going to add this command so that every time a new shell is popped uh, Kelly knows where to find RBM. So moving on, let's actually install Rails, Ruby on Rails. So Rails is nothing more than a gem and we're going to install it with this command here. Now we have Rails installed, and we can validate that by checking out the version that we're running. So we're running version 4, and now we do in, need to install uh, some Apache dependencies in order to run our Rails application properly. So we're going to install the Passenger gem. Now that we have the Passenger gem installed, we're going to install the actual Mod Passenger module with Apache. And so we've got a script to help us do that. Let's invoke it here. And this isn't going to install correctly the first time because there's going to be some required dependencies that we need to install. Well, I've got those dependencies right here in an apt get so we can get the required software that we need. And we'll let that install. Now that we have all the required software, let's invoke that uh, install Apache module script again. And this time, looks like we're going good. and We're going to install it. It's going to compile here for a few minutes. You'll want to pay particular attention at the end of the installation. There's some key files here that we need to add to our Apache configuration file. And so we're just going to copy those here and add those to the bottom of our Apache configuration file. And there we go. And now continuing on with the install guide here, we're going to start the MySQL service if it's not already running. And we're going to create a, a database user for the Fishing Frenzy development uh, application. So. Once we're in the database, we'll create a database for Fishing Frenzy. And now we're going to create an account and give it full permission to that database we just created. And so if you're going to do a different password, you're going to want to change that right here. Uh, and if you do change a different password, you're going to also need to update your and you're going to need to tell date, uh, Fishing Frenzy in the database YAML file here, you're going to need to update the username and the password to whatever you just set in the MySQL database. So make sure that you update your database.yaml file if you are choosing a different username and password. Update those here for the development, test, and production environment. Otherwise, you won't be able to perform 
uh, rake migrations or anything like that in the future steps. So let's run bundle install. And this is going to install all the required gems for this Rails application to function properly. Now that all of our Rails gems have installed properly, let's move into our migration. We're going to use the Rails helper rake to actually help migrate the database and create our database schema. Now once the schema is created, we're going to seed or populate the database with some default values. Once that's done, uh, we'll basically change some permissions to the Phishing Frenzy folder so that way www data, which is what Apache runs under in most instances, uh, will have full permission to the Phishing Frenzy application. So at this time, uh, you're pretty much fully installed. Uh, you don't have to install Redis, uh, which is the next step in this install. Uh, you could get up and running, uh, but we're going to move into the Redis installation at this time. Uh, this Redis is used to send emails in the background so that you can send uh, lots of emails, put it in a queue, and send the email out one by one so that you don't have to sit there and wait while you're sending out hundreds of emails. Your application won't hang. It'll be done in the background. So we're just going to make, install it here from source. We're going to let that run for a bit. Now that we've compiled, let's finish installing Redis. Then we make install. And let's move into the utilities directory and install the actual server process. Defaults work fine in our case, and we can actually validate if it's up and running here. Uh, you can see that the Redis server uh, is actually running and it's got an open port. Now that we have Redis installed and running properly, we'll want to get the sidekick service up and running. We can do that by with the bundle exec helper. And you might get an error right away, and that's because the configuration file that we've specified doesn't have a location for the PID file. So this directory doesn't exist of temp, and nor does the PIDs inside of it. And so we can create those, but the, the caveat is we now need to refresh those permissions because we created those folders as root, and we need to make sure that Apache has full... Uh, permissions to these these locations as well, so we can refresh it with that same command. So at this time, uh, let's try to run our service again, and we're good there. So Sidekick's running. Now we can try to actually start up Apache and see if we can browse to our Phishing Frenzy instance. And here we go. Um, I'm already logged in here, but once you do get logged in, uh, take a look at the system status, and you'll see that Apache's configured properly, Redis is running, and Sidekick is service, service is running as well. Uh, take a look at the Sidekick interface. Uh, this is what you can look at when you send emails. You can see your email sending in a, basically an action, and look at the queue and monitor the queue to make sure everything's uh, properly. Anyway, that's all I wanted to show you. Uh, now you've installed Phishing Frenzy, and I uh, hope you enjoyed.